Hello friends. Today we're working on the 89 F-150 four-wheel drive pickup truck and you can see that the let's see if we can zoom in the uh, wheels off. And what happened is going down the road the lug nuts all came off and the wheel fell off. Very disturbing incident and there's no real reason we could find for it. We hadn't worked on it or changed the tire anytime recently. We thought we had the lug nuts torqued down tight. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the studs on the hub to make sure we have good threads on those lug nuts and new lug nuts to go with the new studs. And it's quite a job. We have to disassemble the front hub assembly and the brake system on it to get to the point where we can drive out the studs and drive the new ones in. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do that today if we can here. Get it all recorded. Right now I'm working by myself without a cameraman. But I'll just go over it for you real quick. The first thing we're going to do is going to be remove the brake caliper by driving out the two retaining slide pins. There's one here and one down here. And these are a Ford kind of setup for these older Fords. You've got to depress this side a little bit and then drive it through with a hammer or some sort of punch in order to get those out. There's no bolts that hold the caliper on. They're all part of a slide mechanism. And since the vehicle was driven for a couple hundred yards after the wheel fell off, we have a huge flat spot on the rotor there that's going to have to be replaced. While we're working on it, we're thinking we're probably going to go ahead and replace the caliper and brake pads as well. Uh, who knows what else we're going to get into over here. We might have to replace the brake line too. We're going to have to look at that. It's pretty rusty. We might replace the brake line too. Not sure yet. But um, anyway, we're going to start with taking the caliper off and taking the lockout cap off for the manual hubs. And then we'll get inside and show you how to remove the wheel bearings so that we can actually slide the hub and rotor off. That is one assembly. These hub and rotor are one assembly on that. Well, it's two pieces that are held together by the wheel studs. And you'll see how it works as we get it apart. We drove the top one out with no problem. That came right out. Now we're going to drive the bottom one out. Basically, you just tap on it nice and square and sometimes they pop right out without even having to use the a pinch or anything to pop them out. There we go. We got it right up near the edge. Now we're going to get our driver on it. And we're going to give it a couple whacks. See what happens. We got it started. I'll finish that up later. Right now I'm going to go get my Allen wrench. And we're going to take the six Allen screws out on the lockout cap. We figured since we're doing and we're going to end up doing the brakes on this side, we might as well buy the parts and do the brakes on both sides. But there we go. Now this cap will just slide right off. And we don't want to take this apart or mess with this. This is the uh, manual lockout. We're just going to leave this alone. And then right inside of this outer circle of the hub here, there's a little wire type retaining ring that we need to pop out. And the best way to do that is put a flat screwdriver on one end and use a pick tool to raise up the other end and then just work it out all the way around. And then I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a, this is your main axle stub here. There's a snap ring right here around that that's going to hold this locking mechanism here in place. We have to take both the outer ring out and this snap ring here out in order to pull out that locking mechanism. There's that copper fitting. I'm just going to replace the copper seal. 
we popped the brake line off from the calipers so that we wouldn't have to manipulate it around or bend it while we're working on everything else. We also slid the lower guide pin out. Now we're ready to yank the caliper right off of there. And then we'll get our snap ring pliers out and begin disassembling the wheel hub assembly. Well, here we are in the house. And what we did is we removed the rotor by pounding out the studs with just a regular handheld sledgehammer. Just laid it upside down so that the points of the studs were upward. Well, I guess it would be right side up, we'd say. And we whacked them with a hammer, and after about two or three hits each, they just popped right out. And then the rotor, same thing. We're going to replace the rotor, so we banged out a little bit with a hammer. There's actually a flat spot here in the... Where's that flat spot at? There's actually a flat spot right here that allows you to get a wedge or a screwdriver in between the rotor and this spindle hub. I guess we call this the hub between the rotor and the hub to actually separate it with. So we got it separated. We took the wire brush and we cleaned up the mating surfaces and the bottom of the circle area where the rotor is going to slide over. We've got our lockout mechanism here checked, inspected, and ready to go back in. We've got the ratcheting lock nut and the wheel bearing here. They both look good. We just actually changed the wheel bearings on this about a year ago, year and a half ago, and haven't driven it very many miles since then, so we're not going to change the wheel bearings this time. We're going to install the new caliper, rotor, and wheel studs, and we'll show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so we we got the rotor in place, we got our axle, you know, our locking axle hub in place. We just got to drive the rotor down so it's flush with our axle locking hub. And you don't want to beat on it with a hammer. That's a no-no. You could take a piece of wood across it so you're hitting the wood, not damaging your rotor. But we got our old rotor. We're just going to gently place her across and tap along the edges until our rotor is flush with our locking hub. So just tap her around. Show them the flat spot on the old rotor. The flat spot? Yeah. Oh, where? Oh, boy. That's where the rotor hit the ground on the pavement. And it's time for, time for a new rotor, right? We could have made it work. So we got this sitting in there. Whoop. Oh, yeah. You got to drive those in place still. Nice tight fit, though. So the hub's nice and tight against the rotor. All Just we got to do now is drive the bolts down in yeah, place. Yep, drive those stud down in place. Make sure you get the dirt out from around the base so there's no dirt trapped under them. And we're going to take a either punch tool and put a punch tool on the back side of the stud and drive it in or else you can take the uh, lug nuts from the other side with some washers in front of them and tighten them up and pull the studs in. Either way will work fine. Or if you have an air hammer you can get the air hammer with a straight bit on it and just drive them in from the back side as well. Alright, here we go. We're going to torque the lock nut down. This is the single ratcheting lock nut style. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to 70 foot-pounds. Yep. Spin the hub. Make sure it's not too tight. Make sure it's got a good preload to it. Give it a couple spins. Make sure it spins okay. Alright. Do it one more time, make sure you still got 70. 70. All right, now back it up and loosen it about a quarter turn. Yeah. More, a quarter turn, way up, straight up and down. All right, now tighten it to 20 foot pounds. It made 20, 25 foot, that 20 sounds light, but tighten it to 20 to 25 foot pounds. And check it, make sure it spins freely. See if you have any lateral play up and down. No. Nope. Alright, there you go then. Alright, that's how you film one that has a single ratcheting nut.
if you have, there's another style that has two lock nuts. And if they have the two lock nut style, you'll tighten the first one down the same way to about 70 pounds. Then you'll back it up, tighten it to about 50 pounds, put in your spacer, and then the secondary lock nut will torque to about 150 pounds. All right, now our next step is just going to be to slide in the lockout mechanism. When you saw us pull that out using the two studs or two bolts, we're going to slide that back into place, put the snap ring back on it to retain it, put the outer snap ring into the groove, and bolt the manual lockout hub back on. And then you can see we still have to put the caliper back on. Almost. There we go. This is one of the lug studs. You can see the threads are gone off it, so these all had to be replaced.